All right, what's up, guys? Belton here, uh, back again with the Discharge Daddies. Uh, been spending the past few days uh, putting together a build, so this is kind of a concept video. Um, I would gonna call this build the uh, Kosu Chaos Infinite Discharge. Um, as a heads up, certainly not a uh, build or league starter, but I think it's a really cool concept building upon what uh, I made in 3.18 in Sentinel League. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll go over all the details in this build. Uh, first thing, because I know people always want to see this, is a map. So we're just going to do a Mesa real quick, just so you can get a, a feel for it, just to see what it kind of looks like. Um, I spent probably, I made the character, I think, three days ago. Uh, first day I was leveling. Uh, second day, uh, put together some of the gear. And then today on the third day, uh, some more of the uh, sort of uh, final touches and stuff. Um, there's still lots, lots and lots that uh, the build needs to have done. Uh, in terms of min-maxing, uh, you know, I, d I don't even have uh, my favorite maps done. I haven't done any Sanctums. Um, you know, there's a variety of things along that lens that uh, need to be finished here. Uh, it's also worth noting, too, uh, at the moment I don't have any increased area of effect. Not on my tree. Uh, neither do I have the... Uh, Increased AOE gem. Um, so the uh, the max AOE here definitely is not uh, you know where it could be. Uh, I did just spend a little bit of time putting together, um, or sorry, not putting together, but running uh, Uber Labs. Um, dedication of the uh, goddess and uh, as well to get a belt and chant so doing those uh, did that death list no problems at all and uh, yeah there's just a basic look at the build uh, obviously through the upcoming days and weeks as I test this uh, we'll get more in depth and uh, definitely do some more benchmarking stuff uh, but there just give you an idea kind of what it looks like or in hideout um, you can see here more or less infinite casting um, and then for mobility, we're using Shield Charge and then Leap Slam to get over some stuff. Um, this is pretty similar to the 100% chance to not consume charges build I did in Sentinel League. Uh, with a few big differences, actually, um, that are quite substantial. And I would actually say that this is uh, a little bit stronger than that. Uh, definitely feels better. Uh, again, there's lots to be tweaked with it, but it is very cool. And uh, I thought I would just sort of put a concept build out there uh, guide and just let you guys know what I've been working on as well. Uh, you know, anyone who's enthusiastic about Discharge can uh, maybe add to this and point out some, uh, you know, improvements. Uh, the ones markedly that need to be done, uh, as I mentioned, I haven't done any of the uh, Pantheon stuff, so got to take our Minor Gods uh, as well. <laughs> uh, you can see I have not done any favorited maps, and I've only actually done two Sanctums this entire league. So at the moment, I'm using the Relic from my... Uh, uh, this is the first Relic that dropped when I did it on my Tornado Shot character, so that'll obviously improve. Uh, but uh, yeah, now that we got that out of the way, uh, I guess we can uh, go into the intricacies of the build, how it works. So the core concept is uh, we want to be doing infinite discharge. And so by that, uh, I mean 100% chance to not consume charges as we did in Sentinel League. Now, unfortunately, in this league, it's not possible to get 100%. Uh, that requires recombinators because you have to use a fossil, uh, the faceted fossil as well. Um, you have to have 10% uh to quality of socketed gems from Haku. Uh, it is possible to get the 10% quality of socketed gems and then to manually synthesize. However, obviously um, you cannot use fossil after that. So uh, I did craft this. Uh, this cost me four mirrors to craft. Um, first thing I did was buy the uh, plus one support gems on a 1.6 attack speed base, uh, which is not that important, but it does scale uh, the movement speed, or sorry, the uh, attack speed of shield charge. Uh, I then used Vivid Vultures until I rolled 6% quality of socketed gems. Uh, it would work as well with uh, quality of socketed fire, cold lightning gems, AOE gems, uh, etc. Any Anyone that actually would target discharge. And then for our third mod, we got uh, increased damage per frenzy charge there. Um, on top of that, we have uh, the, the socketed uh, spells, or sorry, trigger a socketed spell on skill use. So that's what uh, I, KOSU stands for in the name of the build, cast on skill use. Uh, and then on top of that, we've got uh, plus one to all gems, plus one to dex gems, plus two to support gems, and eight quality to socket gems. Uh, every one of those mods is absolutely necessary. And the reason for that is uh, you can see here, 
when we look over at our discharge, uh, we actually have 139% quality. The other 30 coming from our ashes. Uh, unfortunately, we need 140% quality to get 70%. So we are literally half a percent away. But since uh, POE never rounds up, we have 69%. But that is the core function of the build, essentially, um, to have uh, discharge uh, cast without uh, charge removal. That's one of the key elements. Uh, the second one is how is discharge being cast? Uh, and how are we bypassing the cooldown on discharge? Uh, and that is using the trigger a socketed spell on skill use with a four second cooldown. We combine that with endless misery right here. Uh, and you'll note with endless misery, it says with at least 40 intelligence and radius, discharge cooldown is 250 milliseconds. Now the wording right there is very important where it says cooldown is, it doesn't say cooldown is lower to or raised to, it says cooldown is. And that means that that is a finite statement. It cannot be changed up or down. So sources of increased cooldown reduction will do nothing. But on top of that, on, on the flip side, uh, anything that raises the cooldown, um, even if it is something finite like four second cooldown, uh, those are ignored as well. So by putting discharge into here, uh, we bypass the cooldown of it and we are allowed to cast it four times a second. Um, and again, you'll notice that it is a uh, <coughs> spell on using a skill. So it does not have to be on a crit. It does not have to be on an attack. It's on any skill use. So you can see here, when I shield charge, uh, when I shield charge, it'll cast it. When I leap slam, it'll cast it. When I blade vortex, it'll cast it. Uh, or even when I just use regular vortex, it'll cast it. So any kind of skill use you have there, uh, and since the cooldown is 250 milliseconds and that is flat, that means we can uh, cast four times a second. So since we only have 99%, that means that one out of every 100 discharges will uh, consume the charges, right? So you can see here we have 11 frenzy, uh, I believe we have nine power and yeah, 11 frenzy, nine power and five endurance charges. So we are getting our endurance and our frenzy charges from replica ferals fur. And then by putting aspect of the cat on our helmet here. Uh, so when we put on aspect of the cat, every time it flips around, we will get the endurance and frenzy charges. Uh, I haven't found it to be necessary. However, you can also socket less duration into your or whatever piece of gear has the aspect of the cat on it. And it will cost the it will cause the rotation of cat's agility and cat's stealth to be much faster. And so it will generate those charges quicker. Uh, since we have 99%, one out of every 100 discharges will consume both the frenzy and the endurance charges. Uh, that means that once every 25 seconds, it'll drop. Why that is not terribly significant is because uh, moving around maps, it's never going to matter at all. You'll never ever notice. Uh, against bosses, it might occasionally. However, uh, because we're assassin, uh, we're never actually going to drop our power charges because we have 10% chance globally on critical strike, 20% chance on non-critical strike, 8% chance on kill. As well, we also have power charge on crit on our discharge, and we have power charge on crit on our uh, blade vortex and our or, and on our vortex. So uh, there's never going to be a situation in combat or whatever where we're not able to discharge. However, there will be in any fight that exceeds 25 seconds. Now, of course, you know it could consume those charges right at the beginning of the fight, which would be a bummer, but it's no big deal. They'll come back within a couple of seconds, uh, and again, on average, it'll last 25. Um, so that's really never going to make a difference at all unless you were fighting a boss. Um, but yeah, so that's the core function there. So we combine the trigger spell, uh, the trigger uh, from the June craft with Endless Misery to have it cast. The 139% quality, which we are achieving uh, through the weapon right here with all of these. So you got the plus one to support gems, plus one to dex gems, plus one to all gems, and plus two to support gems. So that gives five gem levels. Then we put in an Awakened Enhanced level five. That gives us a level 10 Awakened Enhanced for 72% quality. A 23 quality discharge. Mine happens to be 2123. Uh, you can see here. Uh, so that's uh, 7295. And then we get uh, another 30% uh, here. So that's uh, 125. And then we get 6% from the Implicit, 131. And 8% from the Haku Craft, 8% quality there, 139. Uh, for our third socket here, we have Awakened and Power level 5, which we get plus 4 gem levels to, giving us a level 31 discharge. Now, obviously, we're going to combine that with the Squire. Uh, in the Squire here, you can see I've got plus 1 gems uh, corrupted onto it. Oh, in here, we have uh, Divergent Power Charge on Critical Strike, which is going to give us um, you know, 4% more damage per power charge. Uh, as well, it's going to give us Power Charge Generation. And with the Divergent, uh, we're going to get that increased damage as well. Uh, divergent Inspiration is very, very important. Uh, because you'll note here that one of the things, uh, the downsides with the trigger gem, or sorry, with the trigger craft is that it, they cost 150% more mana. Now, 
uh, if you were to take out <laughs> diverge, or sorry, if you were to take out inspiration as well, we combine mage blood with the 25% reduced mana cost of skills here. You'll see that discharge goes to 175 mana, which means that it would cost, uh, you know, 700 mana a second. That's obviously not feasible. So we put those in there, and now we look. Discharge is two mana. Now the reason we don't have zero mana is because the way inspiration works, when you cast it, it gives you an inspiration charge. Right, and the inspiration charges go up to five. Uh, the inspiration, char the charges of inspiration are what actually give them more multiplier and the increased critical strike chance. If you had a zero mana cost, you would not get the inspiration charges, uh, therefore nullifying the effect of it and making it do nothing. Um, I'm actually just going to put in D and D. Uh, <clears throat> so it would do nothing. So we want to have discharge cost as little mana as we can, but make sure it still costs mana. Now another big thing that we have this uh, league, before I get into the sixth gem there. Uh, and this is what is the big difference from this and uh, the one in Sentinel League, is that we're also combining it with Original Sin. And Original Sin makes it so all of our elemental damage is converted to Chaos, with the enemy's Chaos res being zero. So, you can see here, we do pure Chaos damage on our Discharge. So, why that's cool is because A, we don't have to worry about Reflect, B, we don't have to worry about Penetration, uh, and C, we don't have to, uh, you know, worry about scaling any of the other different, or, you know, leveling out the different... Um, uh, elemental modifiers and, and, you know, focusing on lightning cold or whatever. Uh, but also it does allow us to, to have that conversion. Um, and we have very efficient access to chaos nodes being that we're assassin. So as our sixth gem, you can see, we've got divergent void manipulation here. Now I know that the, probably the, the knee jerk reaction is to say, well, void manipulation has an awakened version. However, it only gives 4% more damage, but the divergent gives, uh, socketed, uh, skills have, 0.52% chaos damage leached his life. In previous versions of this build, we would have to use Dorianis on a large cluster jewel, an elemental cluster jewel, to give us that 0.2%, or we would be reliant on leech from a boot enchant. Uh, since we have this here, not only do we get the more multiplier for the chaos damage, uh, it's also a very high more, more multiplier, uh, but we also get leech out of it. So that's, that's incredibly, incredibly efficient. Uh, so each one of these gems has a very specific purpose. Uh, again, if you really wanted to, you could switch out uh, Divergent Void Manipulation uh, and put in Awakened AoE if you were mapping, and it would uh, you know increase your area of effect by quite a bit. The one thing to note, though, is that Endless Misery, as one of its downsides, is it reduces your area of effect by 60% less. Now, Discharge, uh, just as a base uh, element of the Jewel, does give you 20% increased area of effect per charge consumed. Since we have 25 charges, that's 500% increased AoE. Uh, so it does actually still have quite a, a reasonably sized AoE, but it's also one of the reasons why I decided to include Vortex there on our left click, because it makes it so that, um, you know, anything that we miss with our uh, our immediate discharges when we're moving around maps, we do have that additional, uh, you know, dot that they can run into and pick up some uh, stragglers. But yeah, so the big, the big differences uh, with this versus the last one is... Um, you know, there's been a multitude of new items uh, added that I'll get into, but also the fact that we're converting to 100% chaos. Uh, so those are the, the core functions here. So what does the 100% chaos change? Well, it allows us, first of all, to use Blizzard Crown. Uh, we wouldn't use Blizzard Crown probably in the past uh, because of uh, the downside of the implicit. Your hit street cold resistance as 10% higher than actual value. However, since we're converting to chaos damage, we get the benefit of all the cold damage that it adds flat, and we don't have to worry about the downside of it. And what makes that amazing is that uh, Discharge has one of the highest effectiveness of added damages in the game. You'll see there that it's 600%. So for this, where it's 84 plus 128, uh, that's 208, 212, 104 average damage, which is then going to get uh, multiplied by 6. So we're actually getting um, you know, over 600 average, uh, 600 cold damage added to this. Now, again, one of the downsides of uh, Endless Misery is that you deal 60% less damage, uh, however, uh, that does allow you to, instead of Discharge having a two second cooldown, it's allowed to be cast four times a second. So you're getting 60% less, but in the same amount of time period, you're casting Discharge eight times. Uh, more than makes up for it. Um, however, obviously that uh, is, is a, an effect there. Um, so that's, that's one of the benefits we have there. Uh, another change that that causes as well is that uh, Previously, you would potentially use Elemental Weakness or another Offensive Curse. Uh, however, since Curses, not even Despair, actually work with Original Sin, um, we decide to go with Double Defensive Curses. So you see here we've got Temp Chains on Hit and Enfeeble. Um, and uh, so that's just a couple of extra defensive layers. Uh, and the way that we get Dual Curse is by using Impossible Escape. This is another thing we didn't have last time. 
and we, we picked that with uh, chaos inoculation so that allows us to pick anything in the region here uh, including I'm level 99 right now my next point will be going towards atrophy 27% uh, chaos damage and skill duration which will benefit uh, both vortex and blade vortex uh, but we also pick up influence uh, the 8% reservation and we get Whispers of Doom. So instead of having to spend four points to get there, we can just grab that with one, grab these two here, and we can also get that hyper-efficient point. 27% uh, increased damage and skill duration for one single point is fantastic. Um, so we have that as a defensive layer. Uh, Mage Blood, always a staple. Uh, you can see mine's double corrupted here. Um, and naturally, as with most Mage Blood builds, we are going to be using that, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, picking up a lot of our slack here. Um, another big change too is that in the past we would have to pretty much always run purity of elements because of um, uh, you know to get that ailment immunity. In particular, if you are using Death Store, which we are not this league, but if we are using Death Store, one of the downsides is increased elemental uh, ailment duration on you. So you want to make sure that you're ailment immune. Uh, but because of Storm Shroud and because we have such easy access to so many jewels by virtue of how Discharge navigates the tree to to acquire charges, we pass by a lot of jewel slots. Um, Storm Shroud is a, a, a great uh, way to get around that because we pop that in and then we put 55% chance to avoid being shocked uh, simply on our flask suffix and for one flask suffix we get complete ailment immunity. As you can see here we have no ailments and now we're ailment immune. So that's a really nice change as well and it does free up a 50% aura for us. Um, you can see here now my gear again is very expensive uh, and I will go over the gear specifically. Another big change uh, though um, uh, is Forbidden Flesh and Forbidden Flame. Uh, we are still using Swift Killer as we did the last time, but they changed Swift Killer to be plus one power charge and plus one frenzy to plus two frenzy charge. So because of this, uh, I decided to switch from Death Store, as I just mentioned, uh, over to uh, Dark Ray Vectors. Now, Dark Ray Vectors give a frenzy charge, whereas Death Store gives an endurance charge, and we still do uh, pick up the endurance charge corruption. But what's really cool about Dark Ray Vectors is that they give global evasion per Frenzy Charge and they also give movement speed per Frenzy Charge. Now, since our Frenzy Charges are always up, with 11 Frenzy Charges, which we have right now, that's 110% global evasion rating and 55% move speed. On top of that, a bit of resistance, um, some armor evasion, and we get those two charges. Um, so that's really, really solid. And uh, we also have the plus two aura there, which uh, this league, we have taken advantage of the auras a lot. And we've added some several more defensive layers than we had in the past. So uh, to go over that real quick, uh, we are actually running Divergent Determination, Divergent Grace, Anomalous Zealotry, Anomalous Discipline, Anomalous Defiance Manner, Divergent Vitality, and Divergent Tempest Shield, as well as Aspect of the Cat. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight auras. Um, and in this pair of gloves here, we've got just a level four Enlightened. I could put a level five Awakened in there. Uh, we get even more reservation. I could probably even sneak in another aura if I did that. Uh, but uh, combining that with uh, the easy access we have to Charisma nodes, um, the influence and 8% here. Uh, as well, we go ahead and we pick up um, one of the uh, item level 84 plus uh, small cluster jewels with 6% mana reservation efficiency. Uh, and that makes that these three points here give us 24% efficiency. As well, we have uh, uh, the... Whoop, the uh, efficiency nodes over here so the auras are a huge part of this um but it was this is another element that we did not have last lead uh looking at it right now we have about thirty thousand armor uh thirty six thousand evasion uh rating uh, as well um we are going hybrid in this one too which is another change that we didn't have last time uh so with hybrid we're going life and es uh <clears throat> so that gives us an, an additional layer. Now, obviously, our ES is quite a bit lower, uh, but we do have really easy access to uh, sustain in this one as well. So I've already mentioned that we have the Chaos Leech uh, coming from, or which is all of our damage, but uh, coming from our discharges, we get it from there. Uh, as well, we do have uh, these points right here. Again, because we're pure Chaos, we get access to uh, these Chaos nodes are incredibly efficient. Uh, the penetration from Heart of Darkness does actually work with Original Sin. So this is our only source of pen. Uh, but also as a chaos mastery you can get 0.5 percent of chaos damage leeches energy shield so we have life leech uh, from void manipulation we have es leech from uh chaos mastery we also have es regen from ghost dance and from divine shield and as, as you recall we have 30,000 of both evasion and armor and on top of that we also have watcher's eye here uh with uh 
life gain on hit will affected by vitality es on hit will affected by uh discipline and chance to blind will affected by grace so blind is another small defensive layer on top of that uh but You'll note that Blade Vortex, which we mostly use for single target, uh, when it's at 10 stacks, it will hit 7.5 times a second. Discharge hits 4 times a second, and Vortex hit once a second. So we're hitting 12.5 times a second, uh, 7.5, yeah, 12.5 times a second, and from that we are getting, uh, you know, 300, wait, sorry, 12 times 30, uh, 360, uh, three, 375 ES a second, and 375 life per second, plus we have the Leech, uh, plus, we have the regen from Ghost Dance and from uh, Divine Shield. If we wanted to as well, we can put a Mastery uh, into there to get some ES regen. Um, and we can also swap out uh, one of our flasks at some point if we'd like to, uh, to get the regen here uh, as well. Uh, I, I typically just use this in lab or things like that. Uh, but, you know, we do have to be somewhat conscientious of, of dots, uh, particularly. Uh, you can see, though, we do have Left Shade on here right now. Uh, and Left Shade definitely helps out against dots. And we can always swap over to uh, Sor Soul of Arakali as well. Uh, <clears throat> another uh, big change that we've got here, too, uh, is you'll notice that I have no points into crit, no crit, no crit, no crit, and no crit, all uh, right? So we have literally zero points of crit on our tree, yet we are still crit capped. Uh, and the way that we're achieving that this league is uh, we're, obviously we have our power charges uh, for which we have, um, you know, plus 1.5% base crit here. Uh, as well, we have uh, the charge mastery up here where we are getting 8% increased critical strike chance. So each one of our power charges is giving us 48% crit. We have nine of those, so that's uh, 480 minus 48, uh, 4, 432, I believe, percent crit. Um, plus, we've got another over 300% here. We've also got Zealotry. And another big thing that we're adding this league to is uh, Rational Doctrine. So you can see here, if you have Intelligence as your highest stat, uh, the uh, you will get Profane Ground. So we do have Intelligence as our highest stat, which means that we get another 1% base crit. So Discharge already has a base crit of 7, so between Propane Ground and between uh, the 1.5% uh, we get from Deadly Infusion, uh, that's 9.5% base crit. Uh, if you really want to as well, you could even put 0.8% on your Glove Enchant, giving you 10.3% base crit. Uh, and then you've got, again, 300%, 440% or whatever it is there, uh, plus Zealotry, you could even use Precision, Ice Golem, whatever. It is not very difficult to hit crit cap. Uh, now, you might be curious about the crit multi, um, and I can say that we do have uh, crit multi actually in very high values as well. So we get 5% crit multi per power charge right there, and we also get 5% crit multi per power charge here. So we get an additional 90%, uh, so that'll put us at 525% crit multi with 100% crit chance. Uh, and the way that we're achieving that, and the reason why we don't go after it on the trees, is because Discharge has incredibly efficient uh, crit multi access through jewels. Now, I crafted quite a few of these today. I actually made seven of them in about half an hour. Uh, you can see those up here. I even have some that have uh, Crypt multi synths on them. But what we decided to do was grab uh, some 7% Life Fracture Jewels and then use Death Fossils uh, to put 45% Crypt multi and 7% Life on uh, each one of these. Uh, I, I did, again, this is not a budget build, uh, and you don't definitely don't need to have this much to get it going, but I did also buy three One Passive Voices. One Passive Voice is there, One Passive Voice is there, and a One Passive Voice is there. So we do have uh, 45, 90, 135, uh, 180, and uh, with 225 percent crit multi over five jewels as well as 35 percent life uh, you can always like the arcane potency for example is quite efficient uh, and there's obviously different sources for that too um, there's the forbidden flame there uh, what else do we have here boo -boo -boo. yeah forbidden flesh uh, this as well too is another change that you can have while mapping inspired learning i've never used in the past uh, but we can just swap that in right here take out this put that in uh, throw a little corrupted blood immunity and bada boom bada bing one two three four you will now have the effect of uh, Headhunter, well, one Headhunter one at a time while mapping, and that's obviously to your preference. Um, so yeah, Storm Shroud, Watcher's Eye, and the small cluster there. So that brings our grand total to uh, 17 jewel slots. Uh, right here, we also decided to take Unnatural Instinct. This is probably something I'll eventually phase out, but uh, putting that in here, you do actually get a significant amount of uh, benefit. Uh, we're talking about 2% spell block, 15% damage, uh, 20 flat mana, 20% increased mana, effective curses. Um, we've got some damage recouped as life, another source of uh, regen there or sustain. 
Uh, if we wanted to put on heralds, we could as well, and we have reduced efficiency, uh, plus some int. Uh, now we decided to go with Tempest Shield because I was I was tinkering with the thought of perhaps using Glancing Blows, uh, and that would give us pretty much block cap on top of that. Um, Vis-a-vis -vis using the uh, Amethyst Flask as well, Oop, you can get... Um, you can get Chaos Res on here, upwards of, uh, I believe it's 8 per node, 24% Chaos Res. Put that on your tree or on your jewels. It's quite easy to get Chaos Res cap. Again, the Crit Flask giving us Crit cap. Uh, we've got the Granite Flask giving us our, our, you know, the base uh, the base amount of Fizz mitigation there uh, to feed into Determination. Uh, and as well, we've got that Quicksilver for the move speed and the Shock Avoidance there naturally with Storm Trap. Uh, we're using uh, a Seething Flask here, but we can also swap that out. I've, I've actually never died. On this character yet which is quite remarkable if you know how i play i'm, I'm pretty absent-minded um we also will we'll, we've occasionally put in uh the explodey flask here uh we can uh you know uh, tinker around with that if you're using the explodey flask you can change the flask suffix on amethyst since this is a bismuth um other ones that are good too again because we're chaos damage uh, you could also use an Aziri flask in here uh, but the life flask is just, you know, a good oh shit button. That being said, we do have a variety of sources of sustain as well. We have, uh, uh, you know, uh, leech, uh, regen, um, you know, uh, on hit. Uh, as long as you're pretty, you know, as you're conscientious, it's pretty easy to, uh, to, to maintain that. Uh, so yeah, the defensive layers again, armor, evasion. Uh, we've got 30% spell block, 30%, uh, or sorry, 33% uh, spell block, 30% block, uh, chaos res cap. Uh, we've got... Ellie weakness cap, we've got life regen, we've got ES regen, we've got ES on hit, life gained on hit, uh, ES leech, life leech, uh, we've got ghost shroud and divine shield. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's definitely, definitely a little bit tankier than it was last time. Not a little bit tankier, substantially tankier. Um, the one thing again that we would maybe want to be somewhat conscientious of are our dots, but left shade certainly helps with that. Um, and you know, as long as you are conscientious of uh, what you're doing, it's, it's quite easy to, uh, to move around those. Um, we do have reduced damage from critical strikes as well, double corrupted onto my chest here. Um, and we do have blind on hit from our watcher's eye. Uh, so yeah, there's a couple other additional layers with that. Um, mana reservation efficiency, yada, yada. So I think that's pretty much the core elements, uh, of how the build functions. Um, we do use shield charge and we use phantasmal leap slam. Um, the reason we're using shield charge, shield charge is in my opinion, the best movement skill in the game because it scales off of your base weapon attack speed, your global attack speed increases modifiers, as well as your movement speed modifiers. Uh, leap slam we are using simply because uh, it allows you to, you know, jump over things like uh, walls and stuff like that. Uh, as well, since we're already using attacks, faster attacks to buff the shield charge, it makes sense to use Leap Slam as opposed to something like uh, 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 Flame Dash because, you know, obviously the increased attack speed does not impact Flame Dash and we'd have to use uh, either, you know, Ew, fuck, we would either have to use, um, <laughs> sorry, I forgot to uh, turn off the uh, sound notifications for Twitch there. Uh, we'd have to use... Uh, uh, either faster casting or, or something else. Now, uh, you'll see here, I also have Withering Touch attached to Shield Charge and Leap Slam. Uh, the reason that we decided to do that instead of Anomalous Withering Step uh, is because we are a assassin, we are permanently elusive, um, and Withering Step is basically a no-go with that. As well, if you did want to use Flame Dash or, you know, Blink or one of those things that's a spell that has a cooldown, uh, those are shared with Withering Step. It makes it rather difficult. Uh, but also, as well, I really only like using Withering Step if I put it onto my left click, and we have Vortex on our left click there. So, uh, yeah, so now I'll just go through, again, we went through our Gem 6 link there. Uh, our Helmet here, we've got, these are our Mobility Skills. Um, again, this will apply Wither. Uh, here we've got again auras with a plus two aura and here we've got the plus one auras or sorry plus one to all gems with uh, our 50 percent of gems here in the enlightened um one thing i haven't gone over is our six link in the chest uh there's actually quite a bit of um utility and uh you, like uh you you know you can customize this as you wish uh divergent blade vortex is what i'm using a blade vortex i would definitely suggest uh straight up as you know for your single target spell for sure. Um, there are certain breakpoints for Blade Vortex to cast this properly. The problem is with Aspect of the Cat, uh, you have Cat Stealth and Cat's Agility, uh, which are going to make it so that you're never going to have a consistent, I believe 3.7 is the exact breakpoint you want, uh, but you're never going to actually have a consistent one because of the swapping of Cat's Agility and Cat's Stealth. Uh, but Blade Vortex by far is the easiest one if you're just standing still, single target, want to take care of that. But again, moving around in maps, you're going to be having, you just want to keep up 10 stacks 
which is very easy to do uh, with Awakened Unleash or just Unleash in general. Um, so what we have on here, uh, we have Divergent Blade Vortex, uh, Increased Area of Effect, um, Awakened Unleash, um, Power Charge on Crit. And again, that's just to help in case of situations where these two do drop. Um, it really isn't necessary, necessary to have this. Uh, and then we have Vortex, which is great because, you know, it does a decent amount of damage itself. It's all converted to Chaos. Uh, and it's a nice little dot to leave behind you there, as well as it does scale since it's an AoE. It scales up the same things uh, as Blade Vortex does. Uh, so we, you know, the power charge on crit will well that'll work just work. For, it works for the hit, not the dot, obviously. Uh, Unleash does not uh, does not scale Vortex at all, but increased area of effect and increased duration do. The increased duration is mostly just so that while mapping around Blade Vortex, I don't have to recast it constantly, uh, because Blade Vortex uh, does also you know help sustain with the uh, ES on hit and life gained on hit. Uh, so we just keep that up basically in maps, cast it once or twice every five or ten seconds. Uh, and then you just move around like this, basically. Uh, and then when you get to single target fights, you can just sort of stand still. Uh, and you can shield charge or leap slam a couple of times to apply wither. Uh, so that's all of the gems that we've got there. Uh, I think we've gone over the defensive layers, uh, how the discharge is cast, uh, the gem links. And so now I guess we'll go over the gear. Uh, what I should say is uh, this is one of... Discharge is one of my passions. I love playing Discharge, and so I have absolutely no no problem throwing any amount of money towards it. Uh, I did actually put together a spending sheet here uh, in terms of what I put into the character. Uh, it is pretty obscene for the average person, so uh, don't uh, don't think that this is what's required to get it going. Um, but you can see here we have sixteen thousand two hundred and forty divines spent, or thirty three point eight three mirrors. Uh, that's valuing mirrors at four hundred eighty divines. Um, so I'll go over each piece of gear, and uh, if you do want to find out what each piece cost, uh, I'll link um, I'll link the uh, the Google Doc for this uh, in the description of the video below. Um, but yeah, we went over the weapon here, the synthesized jeweled foil. Uh, we we need to have every single mod that's on there, except for the damage per frenzy charge, uh, which is uh, you know we just rolled that ourselves because we do scale frenzy charge as our highest charge here. Uh, and again, it doesn't matter which charge you pick since it's all getting converted to chaos, aside from the benefits it gives. Uh, power charge is the best one uh, in terms of all of the benefits. But Frenzy, uh, still very good. We get the more multiplier, etc. So we've already gone over the weapon. Uh, for Ashes, we uh, actually managed to get a perfect Ashes, so 10, 20, and 30. Uh, I noticed when I looked up to see what a perfect one was, somebody happened to be selling a Relic version for the exact same price uh, as the ones that were non-Relic. So naturally, I bought that. Um, the Squire, uh, some, I don't know why somebody did this, but these are about 200 to 250 divines. Uh, I noticed somebody posted one for 55 divines. So naturally I bought that very quickly. That's the only reason why we have a 6% quality of gems and a 3% block as opposed to 8% and five. Uh, you can also see that it's item level 83. If I were to have done this myself, it would be item level two, uh, because that makes plus one gems much easier to get. Um, <clears throat> but nonetheless, again, saving 150 divines, certainly a good call to go there. Uh, for our helmet here, we've got uh, Blizzard Crown, as I mentioned, the benefit there with the 30% chance for discharge to not consume charges, absolutely mandatory to combine with the uh, quality. Uh, we've got a plus one power charge, elemental damage, global crit multi, aspect of the cat, and then a crafted mod. You can put that as you wish. Um, strength and int I have on there because uh, I actually don't need either of those now. I can put suppression there too. Oh, sorry. One thing I do want to mention, when we do get a, a good charge, we are going to have suppression cap. I'm um, not suppression capped at the moment, but uh, when we do get a good relic, we're going to switch to Mage Bane, and then I will go into uh, Suppression Mastery. Uh, between those two things, uh, we'll be able to hit uh, Suppression Cap, no problem. Uh, I haven't had any issues with uh, with uh, spell damage or mitigating that right now. Um, although, you know, you typically do want to have either like max spell block or suppression or, um, uh, you know, max res changes. Uh, all three of those are options. Again, because we do have so many auras, I could very easily put on like a Melding of Flesh, and put on a, a purity and uh, uh, go with something like that. So we do have lots of options. We could either go max spell block. We actually have all, all of the options with respect to spell damage. We can go suppression route, we can go block route, or we can go uh, the max res route. Uh, so lots of customization with this uh, by virtue of uh, the tree. Now, uh, I did, again, this character is only three days old, as I mentioned. So nothing that's on here is definite in terms of long term. Um, you know, there's, I'm going to make constantly make changes on these. Uh, for now, you know, this is the skeleton that's pretty, pretty consistent here. Uh, you're just going around to grab your charges along the way, uh, picking up pretty much just the life nodes, uh, anything that just has to do with auras, the charges, 
uh, as well as uh, a couple of defensive things here. We did also go for the uh, Heart of Darkness because it's the only source of pen that we can get. Plus, these nodes are very efficient. 28, uh, 44... Uh, 54, 64, 71% damage and 7% pen per point as well. It also allows us to get the uh, the, the Chaos Leech. Uh, this is one thing I didn't mention earlier as well. Uh, I am also I'm obviously very aware that a minimum charge uh, does not uh, a minimum charge does not work um, with discharge. So discharge has to be able to remove charges to get rid of the damage. However, the reason I did choose this as well as charge mastery. Uh, is because despite the fact that this will make it so we can only discharge eight power charges as opposed to the nine that we have, uh, we, do, we have 25 total charges, right? So the one minimum charge only represents 4% of our base damage. Um, however, uh, you'll note that our, we have a lot of crit multi as well. We have multiple more multipliers. But the one thing that discharge builds tend to lack uh, is increased damage, multi like so sources of increased damage. Uh, and if you're aware of how, obviously, the way any skill works, spells especially, you have your base damage of the spell, which is, you know, uh, you get the level of the gem. We have a level 31 discharge. Um, and then discharge is unique in the fact that its base damage is scaled off of charges. So uh, we have it very, very high level. We have a lot of charges. So we have a ton of base damage. Uh, then you have your sources of increased damage, um, which are then multiplied by your more multipliers and then your crit and your crit multi. Since we have 100% crit chance, uh, our crit multi just becomes an exact multiplier on top of those. But you'll note looking at the tree here, we have almost no sources of increased damage um, aside from the, the ones that come from uh, uh, power charge scaling. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you'll see what I mean with that in a second here. Um, so the reason that we take the uh, one minimum charge here is because we get 8% increased damage per power charge. So that gives us 72% increased damage by itself. As well, we get 3% increased damage for endurance power or frenzy charge. So uh, that gives us another 75% damage. So for these two points that we take here, uh, we get uh, 75 plus 72, that's 147% increased damage, which works out to be about a 20% more damage since we have so few sources of the... Uh, so few sources of um uh, of uh uh increased damage on our on our tree uh the only other ones we have again are these chaos nodes here uh, we'll eventually have the atrophy right there um we have none down here um <laughs> yeah that's that's honestly it right there oh sorry we also have uh eight percent increased damage here so 24 percent there as well uh, but you can see that we, we it's, we're somewhat uh, starved on the increased damage side of things. Um, that is also what makes this ring, getting onto the next pieces of gear that I have, uh, this ring is the bulk of the cost. As I mentioned here, uh, you know, the total value of our build is around 33.83 mirrors or 16,000 divines. 20 mirrors of that uh, it counts on this. Uh, I do have a caveat at the bottom here. Um, the value, uh, this values the ring at 20 mirrors and the weapon at 5. Oh, oh shit. Control Z, there we go. <laughs> uh, the ring at 20 mirrors and the, and the, the weapon at 5. However, uh, if you just want to go on the cost that it took to craft them, uh, the ring cost 9 mirrors to craft and the, the weapon cost 4 mirrors to craft. So if you want to use just the cost basis and not what I think the value is, when you're talking about mirror items, value is always somewhat of an illusory metric anyway. Um, but uh, if you were to take, yeah, just the cost, it would be 22.83 mirrors or 10,960 divines in gear. Uh, but you'll see here with this ring, uh, we, we do have... Um, uh, again, we got some crit multi, some cast speed, which is primarily for Blade Vortex, uh, the Chaos Res, naturally, uh, the minus mana, as I mentioned, we have uh, obviously a very expensive uh, skill. Uh, the flat cold here is uh, the June cold. Uh, sorry, the, the flat damage here is not, when it's done with June, it's just flat damage. It's not two attacks. So the cold and lightning damage here, again, because Discharge has a great uh, effectiveness of out of damage. Uh, and then uh, the life, of course. Uh, we have the maximum frenzy and power, but again, we have spell damage per power charge, uh, which is huge. Uh, as we have nine power charges, that's 63% increased damage. Um, so we have, you know, 73 there, 63 there, 130. So we have a 300% increased damage total. Uh, basically, almost, it's just, uh, yeah, 24 there, uh, 72 there, 71 there, so 95. Um, Oh, is that 147, 240, 240, 60? Yeah, so about 300% increased damage. So that one implicit gives us, you know, almost 20% uh, of our sources of increased damage. Uh, so this is, again, the bulk The bulk of the value in the build is coming from these two items here. Uh, if you were really trying to replicate this, obviously you could just mirror these for me um, and that would knock off, uh, you know, if you're talking on a cost side, this costs uh, 13 mirrors to make on a value side, somewhere around 25 mirrors. 
So, you know, you could just accomplish the same thing with two mirrors of, uh, you know, just by taking a copy for yourself. So that's the next piece of gear there. Uh, after that, we have replica ferrules fur. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we use this as our source for uh, endurance and uh, frenzy charge generation as well. Um, it gives onslaught while you have cat's agility. So there's a source of onslaught. Um, it's not permanent, but it's, you know, it's good enough. Uh, <clears throat> we uh, also have aspect of the cat have no reservation. So that's quite nice. Aspect of the cat's a nice, uh, nice buff, as well as, again, the rotation of it is what gives us our charges. Uh, really nice uh, armor and evasion, and we do have this double corrupted for plus one gems and reduced uh, extra damage from critical strikes, which is uh, a nice little defensive layer there. Um, we don't actually necessarily need to even have uh, the blade vortex slash vortex set up here. Uh, it is possible that I could switch the auras into this chest. That's why I put the plus one gems on there. Uh, I double cropped. I bought like five or 10 chests. I can't remember how many and manually double corrupted them until I hit this. Um, but I could put Awakened and Lightning in there and then just slot in five auras as well. Uh, and then we could swap that into, uh, you know, blade vortex increase or blade vortex unleash. Uh, peacock and increased duration into one and then vortex in its own separate setup. Uh, so that just gives us some uh, uh, utility there uh, as well. Obviously the blade vortex, uh, I forgot to mention, we're keeping blade vortex at level one uh, because blade vortex we're not using as a source of damage. It is primarily as a utility uh, to trigger charges and as a skill use. Uh, the reason for that, you can see its mana cost is four right now. If you get a max level blade vortex, uh, the mana cost here you can see is six. Uh, if it's max level, it's 16. Um, and since we are using so many auras and you can see our, our unreserved mana is only 34, uh, it's just not feasible to, um, to sustain the mana cost of that when it's any higher. However, with what it is right now, um, oh, there we go. There's a situation where we lost, uh, there we go. Now it's back up. Uh, we can, we can cast it infinitely with, uh, with it at level one there. So the plus one gems doesn't impact that, but it does impact the, um, the vortex giving us some uh, additional damage which again is uh, just to pick up first of all it's, it's nice and single target does it too but it's also to pick up straggling mobs uh so yeah that's that uh, original sin uh we got a nice double corrupted version here strength and int uh not particularly overly useful for this build flammability is completely useless uh the strength actually this that makes this incredibly expensive because strength stackers uh tend to use original sin um so this is actually worth about a mirror a mirror and a half um, however, in terms of function, it was actually probably be better just to have the chaos res on here, uh, for this build, but, uh, this is the one that I had. So we're, we're just using that for now, uh, for the hands of the high Templar, we've got plus one gems, uh, primarily for the enlightened, but it also obviously boosts the auras, uh, plus one frenzy charge, obviously because discharge. And then we got dual curse, as I mentioned, uh, none of the offensive curses really do anything. So since, uh, we have the two curses, it's nice to have temp chains, slow them down and feeble, make them do less damage. Mage Blood, we have double corrupted here with a critical strike chance. Obviously, flask effects are always up, so that's permanent. All res, which is nice. Uh, I ran belt enchants today. We this is actually a very good belt enchant, but uh, we don't have elemental ailments at the moment. Uh, we could use skitter bots instead of uh, tempest shield and slide that in to get uh, you know chill and shock. Uh, that's an option as well. I just haven't had any uh, real issues with um, with DPS right now. And again, this character is only two days old, so lots of ways to customize it based on that. Uh, and then Dark Ray Vectors, as I mentioned, that's a new addition uh, as well, because in the past we would have previously been using uh, Death's Door, which gives bleed immunity uh, and all that stuff, uh, as well as an endurance charge. But since we have so many frenzy charges, uh, 11 of them, you know, passing up on 110% global evasion, plus 55% move speed, um, and just, you know, obviously a frenzy charge does more damage than an endurance charge, um, it just seemed like too good of a combo to pass up on. Uh, so that that's the explanation of gear there. Uh, and it really, uh, as with a lot of discharge builds, a lot of the custom, like discharge gets its damage primarily, uh, obviously from jewels and, or sorry, obviously from charges. Um, and then a lot of what you're going to customize in terms of its defensive layers and its offense is going to be based on what jewels you pick, as well as what auras you choose. Uh, as you can see here, we have, you know, seven or wait, how many auras did I have it? Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight or eight different auras up. Obviously, we can change those as you wish. You could put on Wrath if you wanted to or Anger. Um, you could put, you know, swap in uh, Heralds. It's really up to you. Uh, this is just the combination I'm using for now. Uh, by no means is it for, uh, permanent. Um, and then obviously your jewels, you can swap to be defensive, offensive, whatever. Uh, we could set, you know, instead of going triple multi-life, we could go life, ES, um you know uh, all res chaos res uh spell damage spell damage with shield there, there's a lot, so many different ways to, to to change it as you wish um that would be a little foolish for me to say that uh, one way is definitively better than the other um but that being said starting out on the tree here 
uh, going into our, our jewels. Again, Impossible Escape allows us to get the dual curse. Uh, Forbidden Flesh gives us the plus two frenzy charges. Uh, we've got the one passive voices uh, as, as well with the 7% life jewels. Um, <clears throat> we've got the uh, Endless Misery uh, naturally for the build that uh, is a must. Uh, these are just from effect of the, uh, what I just mentioned, uh, another one passive voices, rational doctrine. Um, we do all, we get consecrated gown from zealotry anyways, so it does allow that to linger, but we also get the profane ground, which is again, the 1% base crit forbidden flame, as I mentioned, uh, 7% life with the triple multi, uh, over here, we get the unnatural instinct. Uh, this is not necessarily mandatory, but it, it does give a quite a, a bit of benefit, uh, especially on the mana side of things. Uh, you can see if I take that out, we lose. Uh, you know, 200 mana, um, and, uh, you know, uh, we do get, uh, you know, curse effectiveness as well as, uh, you know, some additional buffs in there, but th that's, this is probably the one that's uh, most likely to hit the chopping block at some point. Uh, we've already gone over the points there. Again, another one passive voices, storm shroud gives us the immunity watcher's eye here. We've got, uh, again, the ES and life gain on hit as well as blind. Uh, and then here we have our, uh, small cluster with the reservation uh coming down here we've got inspired learning which can be swapped out again for uh, a life and multi one depending if you're mapping or not and that covers all of the jewels so uh flask wise i went through that as well uh, the, you also have lots of customization here so uh, really what what the core the core function of this build again the, the things that are really necessary are you need to have a you know the, the chance to not consume charges as high as possible uh original sin uh endless misery uh along with the trigger craft here and the helmet enchant um as well as feral's fur and squire uh but pretty much everything else is customizable uh mage blood i would say pretty much is a requirement uh you, you don't have to use it but it's not going to feel good without it uh in terms of uh how you choose to take the build after that uh it really just comes down to which jewels you decide to use which flasks you decide to use and which auras you decide to use uh, this is one of the things I love so much about Discharge is that uh, it allows you to be customizing it in so many different ways. For example, I was just running Uber or uh, you know dedications of the goddess and gift of the goddess. I ran like seven or eight of them. I was doing them in about three minutes, deathless the whole time. Uh, and you know just to do that, I just swapped out uh, you know Bismuth with life regen uh, instead of the amethyst there. As well, I swapped in a death store because uh, the bleeding can't be inflicted with you helps on traps. Um, you know, if I'm doing different boss fights, you can change your auras on that basis. Uh, there's really a, an infinite way to, uh, you know, an infinite amount of permutations you can have with this. Uh, I just thought I would uh, show you guys what I've been working on here. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, a lot of people have asked me questions. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I played Discharge, which as you guys know, uh, who follow me for a while is definitely my passion. So I hope this was kind of interesting. Uh, another thing to mention, sorry, cause I know this is going to get asked. Uh, I don't use path of building. I've never used path of building. Um, Putting builds together in my head and just kind of testing them out as I go along uh, on the basis of how it feels uh, is what I love doing. I'm very clinical and analytical with, when it comes to my currency. So um, in the same way that people like to go mapping and just here to see what drops as a way for them to make money, uh, I'm the same way kind of with builds. So um, I don't have a path of building to share with you guys. Um, what I can say is that the tool tip on discharge is about five and a half million. It's going four times a second. So uh, that's 22 million there, plus penetration, plus vortex, plus all the other sources of increased, you know, enemies take increased damage. I would say it's probably somewhere around 30 million uh, DPS, uh, maybe a bit more, um, actually probably quite a bit more, but uh, I don't really think that matters uh, too much. Um, I have not hardline codified it. I might do that if it's something that people really wanna see. But again, mostly the mostly the intention here is just sort of to show to share the uh, the framework uh, and see what people can come up with because I think that's one of the fun parts of the game, um, you know. And I prefer to uh, test these things out in game as opposed to just sitting on path of building and theory crafting them forever and ever. Uh, it does feel really great. I really enjoy playing this. Um, the uh, the chaos damage uh, as well as all the new jewels and uh, you know the things that I mentioned previously in this video have made this uh, definitely probably I would say the strongest build that I've ever done um with discharge this ring obviously makes a huge huge difference uh as well as you know mirror crafting this the uh, synthesis thing there uh it's a ton of fun uh i think that there's definitely more to be done on this uh lots of different ways that it can uh, improve and so hopefully if any of you guys share the uh, enthusiasm i have for this uh, i'm definitely open to some feedback and uh maybe we can uh see see where we can take this here over the upcoming days um i'll be uh, you know testing this and benchmarking it against different things um and uh you know we'll see we'll see what it can do um 
uh, the reason I want to get this video out as well is because uh, I have sort of been foregoing my IRL responsibilities for a while. I had a buddy come by and knock on my uh, door today while I was uh, midstream. Uh, being like, where the fuck have you been? So um, after this video I'm, I'm the, and this stream, I'm going to take a couple of days off, probably up until Sunday, the end of the weekend this week. Uh, so I just wanted to put this out there on YouTube and have this recording in case anybody, uh, you know, wants to try it out or, uh, you know, give me some feedback so that when I come back, I have, uh, you know, lots to look at. Uh, it's been a blast putting it together. Again, uh, I just made the character three days ago. Uh, I The stuff I was doing in labs is the, really the first time I've done it in maps. Uh, we definitely need to go get to Sanctum. Um, I'm pretty sure you can get power charges in Sanctum. So uh, that's uh, definitely something I'd be excited to uh, try and farm down there uh, as well. You know, I've got some basic things like uh, the Pantheon to do. So a little bit behind on, uh, you know, the rest of the league, but uh, uh, I think uh, it's 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 going to be okay. So uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video for the rest of the Discharge Daddies out there. If you've got something better, bring it my way. Uh, definitely excited to uh, see and collaborate. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will talk to you next time. Uh, Belton is out. Oh, also, sorry, last thing. Uh, the cost of the build uh, per item, I will, again, link that in the bottom of the video there, as well as anything relevant. All right, guys, have a great one. Peace.